Hi, Bill Henshaw here again. Sorry for the delay in getting new videos up, but here we are. And the first one we had today is on the admission of Maine and Missouri, which is almost 200 years ago to the day this happened. Probably the most important event that's ever been before Congress. So, and as I say, for the admission of Maine and Missouri, you know, is, is a big deal because... And like me, by the way, they didn't tell you a damn thing about this when you were in high school. You had never heard anything about Maine and Missouri, and there's real good reasons for that. Indeed, this issue uh, forms the centerpiece along with the admission of California and West by gosh, Virginia, of my main unopposed constitutional issue that there are no states remaining that are, were admitted into this union. A masterpiece of deception and deceit which has been foisted off on the American people for the better part of 150 years. Principal difficulty was that Congress wanted to admit Maine as a free state while denying Missouri admission as a slave state. Right or wrong or good or bad, whatever you think about that, that's the situation we had 200 years ago. And, you know, this, this setup would have disrupted the parity that was in the House of Representatives and Congress. And this was a big deal because... If the South lost parity in the House, they already were defeated in the Senate, and Congress could pass laws uh, against their interest, and not just slavery. That was kind of a, maybe even not even the main issue, because they were agrarian. And what they had was products to sell, and they had foreign people in France and England to buy them. But with the taxes so high, they couldn't sell them, so they were forced to sell it to the people in the North at whatever price they could get. This is the kind of stuff that went on. And it was the cause of the secession crisis about 10 years after the events we're talking about here. So, as you will learn from acquiring my modestly priced constitutional defense document packets, information available at, on email at uwinincourt at gmail.com, Congress has the sole power to admit new states, and this without any limitation on the proposed constitution of a new state, except insofar as provisions might violate the Constitution of the United States. And this practice was regularly followed, albeit with some interesting episodes, including California and Texas, up until the war between the states, after which new states as such were admitted pursuant to the War Powers of Congress, which is particularly true of West by gosh, Virginia, a phrase I heard often in the halcyon days of my youth in the Appalachian Mountains, but did not understand. I do now, however. Situation was short-lived, however, as the quote-unquote ratification of the non-existent 14th War Amendment, albeit pursuant to the carefully and cleverly concealed secret intent of the Committee of 15 on Reconstruction who framed it, was to extinguish all of the states admitted, even north of the Mason-Dixon line, while relegating the states admitted into this union to, at best, federal insular territorial possessions. With the resumption, quote-unquote, of the admission of states shortly thereafter, Congress openly engaged in dictating to such states terms and conditions of their admission, which was, of course, not into this union, and which ever since has been in a state of perpetual abeyance for 150 years. Note also that Section 1 of the non-existent 14th War Amendment states that all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state in which they reside. Note, not domicile, reside. Thus, if the de, de facto national government can control state citizenship, quote-unquote, in this manner, and tell the states who their citizens are, how can there be any independent states? And the 17th Amendment purportedly removed the states from any participation in the Senate, uh, an, an essential element, common interest to all of the states in the Republic to control the de facto national socialist government and keep it within the limits of the Constitution. Now the states aren't represented. Where are they? They're not there. As if this weren't bad enough, even the presidents, including Taft, who later became Chief Justice and should have known better, got into the act with various objections to the admissions of new states with which the office of the president has nothing to do. 
unless he's acting in the capacity as commander-in-chief of the armed forces, which just happens to mesh perfectly with the admission of such quote-unquote states pursuant to the war powers of Congress. To the Donald, if you're listening, this is the real reason that you can, in fact, summarily terminate birthright citizenship at the stroke of a pen as commander-in-chief. A copy of this script is cheerfully available on request at court at gmail.com. Please like this video, tell your friends, and get the word out. Thank you.